Summit talks in St. Petersburg among the Prime Ministers of Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan brought no compromise regardless the terms of the new customs code coming uh, to power on July 1st this year. Russian government head Vladimir Putin commented on the matter immediately after the meeting. The outcome was expected by the political scientist in Kazakhstan. Vladimir Putin gave an interview to the television network Mir after the meeting of the CIA's prime ministers. The head of the Russian government was frank and said there will be no miracles on July 1st when the unified customs code for Russia, Kazakhstan and Belarus comes into power. Is it right to assume that the customs union will not be fully operational starting July 1st? It is correct. According to Putin, officials failed to reach agreement on all issues concerning the customs union. There are still some sensitive points for the economies of Kazakhstan, Belarus and Russian Federation. However, the Russian premier urged his colleagues during the session to accelerate the creation of the unified economic space. According to the concept, UES should be fully launched by January 1, 2012. There should be no haste with this matter. I believe this is an unfeasible goal for another two to three years. Our economies are too different, have different purposes and tasks set for the development of each country. I think we should not approach this issue earlier than 2015. Prime Minister of Kazakhstan Karim Masimov said to his colleagues that in his country different and often conflicting opinions are void while discussing the customs union. The next session of the Prime Minister's Council will take place in two weeks period. Of course they will reach an agreement and there's no doubt about that. I just, like many other people, know that it will subsequently lead to the loss of independence. Nevertheless, even this hasty work of the premiers does not correspond to the lighting pace of the new integrated organization. Experts believe that even if the customs union will officially come into force in the next two weeks, years will be needed to settle every little detail. After all, political will also requires the attention to details. Meanwhile, a somewhat counter-integration process is being reported in the Almaty region, where village residents call the authorities to take notice of the local Uyghur population. Supposedly, there are signs of separatism in, in their actions. Find out more from the next report. Ethnic Kazakhs living in the village Taskarasu of the Uyghur district, 300 kilometers from Almaty, gathered for an improvised council meeting at Saragul Kudelbaev's house. Neighbors expressed their concerns, saying that local Uyghurs are not very politically correct. I don't want to repeat of the events of 1986 that I have seen all this before. This youth is angry, we are living in Kazakhstan and they are raising their own flags. Last month a group of young people was seen driving across the village with the flag of unrecognized Uyghuristan. This was enough to disturb ethnic Kazakhs who later appealed with the district police, local administration and district national security office. Officials were unable to reassure people and they have calls for the media. After seeing reporters, the only village police officer immediately went on the lunch break. Why are you leaving? We came here from Almaty. It is lunchtime now. Talgat Mustapaev is the new head of the village administration who stepped into this position only a month ago. The previous head was an ethnic Uyghur, while Mustapaev is Kazakh, but he does not share concerns about separatism. There were no conflicts. Kazakh youth was offended by Uyghurs for waving their flags, while the latter said they didn't want to offend anyone and the flag was already in the car when they bought it. At first, the blue flag with the white crescent and star was confiscated and locked in the safe of the district police officer. But when the story received some coverage, it was destroyed altogether. Yet local residents are not satisfied and demand the authorities to publicly denounce the actions of the Uyghur youth to prevent further excesses. Residents of the village Pavlodarska show more tolerance helping a local homeless person with special needs who was left behind by his family and is completely ignored by the authorities. Sergei Dubovchuk is surrounded by care of regular people, but receives no support from the state. Every day for about a year he visits a store in the village of Pavlodarska, where he is fat and it is difficult to him to use his hands. He comes here three or four times a day. We feed him and help with his laundry sometimes. Nine years ago, Sergei suffered a brain injury which led to Parkinson's. Sergei was abandoned by his mother last year after she moved to Germany with other family members. What's your occupation? Where did you work? Yeah. I'm a mechanic. 
The 33-year-old Sergei does not have a place to live. The villagers are outraged about the authorities' inaction on the matter. People have tried to help Sergei several times, but always failed to overcome the bureaucracy, since placing Sergei in the special care center requires dozens of documents. This is bad, since he received no help and is completely ignored. Sergei is a good guy, not an alcoholic or anything. He can be treated. Instead, he is ignored by the authorities. In response, officials say that they are aware of Sergei's problems and are now working to prepare required documents to place him into the special care center. What if he will be kicked out on the street today? He will come to us. To stay for a night? No, he will come to inform us and we will try to solve the problem. If he will end up on the streets, he will come to us and we will deal with the problem accordingly. Officials failed to explain why a person with special needs had to back on the streets of a village for a whole year, but promised to place him in the special care center already next week. Residents of one of the districts in Karaganda have no electricity in their homes for three weeks now. The power facilities belong to the state-owned Kazmunaygas. The entity administration has cut the electricity supply referring to its own illegal actions. According to the new regulations, the company no longer can deal with the electricity supply. Stray dog Kuze is perhaps the only being still living comfortably in the Neftebaza, Koraganda's district of the petroleum depot. Every day Kuze enjoys the full plate of spoiled food since fridges are out of order. More than 60 local residents live without electricity for almost a month. Only employees of the local petroleum depot live here and the entire infrastructure is linked to the depot too. The depot's administration is frequently changed. Local residents pay their utility bills to the entity's owners until the state company Kazmonaigas took over and cut the power. According to the last year's law, the entity has no right to trade or supply the electricity. The company is only allowed to deal with all products. People cannot afford to install a power line on their own since it will cost thousands of dollars. Residents appeal to the town administration for already three years, but always get the same answer about the lack of necessary funds. Kazmonaigas will supply the electricity to the grid, but they will have a separating electric meter with a minus phase. Officials say that residents will have to cover the cost of the meter in its installation, which is estimated at several thousand dollars. Locals say that the authorities simply want to solve the problem at their account. Now people consider protest actions in front of the local administration building. These were all the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Thank you for being with us and goodbye.